the most prominent and well-known of all the measures of relative standing is something called a z-score. Now a z-score tells us the number of standard deviations that a given value, we'll call it x in this case, is above or below the mean. If we have a positive z-score, that tells us that that value is above the mean. A negative z-score means that it's below the mean. Z-scores are also called standardized values. Uh, for example, if a data value has a z-score of negative 1.34, that means that that particular data element is 1.34 standard deviations below the mean. Calculating a z-score is simple. We take the data value that we're looking to find, we subtract the mean, and then we divide by the standard deviation. Up here, we have the same equation, just using the notation for a sample instead of a population. Z-scores are always rounded to two decimal places. When we find the z-score, if it's anything larger than two, we're looking at a data value that's considered unusual. Remember when we were looking at the empirical rule, 95% of our data values fall within two standard deviations of the mean. So once we pass a z-score of two, uh, that's when we start to consider those values unusual. As an example, let's consider your friend who recently took the SATs. They scored a 550 on the math section and a 570 on the writing section. We want to consider the question, which section did they perform relatively better on? Now, obviously, they got the better score on the writing section. However, the mean score of all scores in the math, se math section was a 520, and the mean score of all verbal scores was a 550. The standard deviation for both de distributions was 100. So we want to see, when we take that into consideration, did they actually perform better on the math section? So let's find z-scores for both. So for the math section, we take that math data value, 550, subtract that mean of 520, and divide by the standard deviation. We get a z-score of 0.3. Repeat for the writing, 570, minus that mean of 550, divide by 100, and we get a z-score of 0.2. This is telling us how far we are from the mean measured in standard deviations. The math score is actually farther from the mean. It's a better score relative to the other test takers. So this is the relatively better score, despite the fact that 550 is less than 570. Another important measure of relative standing is something called a quartile. Quartiles break the data up into quarters, 25% sections. Q1 or quartile one is the first 25%. Q2 breaks it up with the second 25% where there's 50% on the left, 50% on the right. This is more familiar as the median. Q3 is the third 25% where there's 75% in total to the left and the last 25% to the right. Something called the interquartile range, also known as the IQR, is Q3 minus Q1. And I also just use the word percentiles. Percentiles are going to be used in the problems coming up. Uh, we will find the percentile of some value. We'll call it K. And that's just found by this equation here. K over 100 times N, which is the number of elements in our data set. And that's going to give us the location of our de desired value. So let's start with a percentile problem. We want to find the 20th percentile of the ages of best actresses. There's 76 ages in this data set. So based on that, we want to find the location for the 20th percentile. So we take 20, switch it to a percentage. 20 over 100 is 0.2. Multiply that by the number of elements in our data set, 76. Okay, that gives us 15.2. Now. When we get this number, we always want to round it up to the next highest integer. It doesn't matter that this is closer to 15. We're going to round it up to location 16. Okay. When I talk about location 16, it means that we're now going to count to the 16th number in our set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. So the 20th percentile, P20, equals this value right here, 27. Okay, let's do one more just so this is clear. 63rd percentile. So 63 over 100 multiplied by 76. Again, in case it's not clear, this 76 is coming from how many numbers are in this whole table. Okay, that gives us 47.88, 
and we're going to round that to the next highest integer. So that rounds to 48. Okay, there's 10 per row. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Location 48, percentile uh, 63 equals 35. Next question, similar question. We want to find Q3, which is the third quartile or the 75th percentile. So we do this the same way, 75 over 100 multiplied by that 76. Now, one thing that's different for this one is that this time we get a whole number here, 57. Okay, where in the past two problems, we got a decimal. When we get a whole number, we're going to do this differently. We can't round it up to the next highest number. Well, we could, it would round up to 58. Uh, but instead of doing that, we're going to actually average both of these locations. So we take the location that we got and we take the next location and we average those two numbers. So we're going to those two locations, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is location 57. This is location 58. And it's the average of those two locations, which makes it 39.5. And occasionally we'll have to work backwards. Here it's asking us to find the percentile corresponding to the age of 38 years. In other words, what percentile okay, relates to that age right there? Okay, so in this case, we wanna do things a little differently. And we wanna start off by counting up how many numbers are there preceding 38. Well, there's 10 in each of these rows, okay? 10, 10 20, 30, 40, 50 and then one more in that row, so 51, okay? And that's out of 76 total values in our table. So 51 out of 76, switch this to a percentage and we get 67.1%. So there's 67.1% of the data before this number right here, which we're trying to find the percentile of. Just like the earlier problems, we always wanna round this up to the next highest number. Okay, if this was exactly an integer, let's say it was 67, we're still going to round it up to the next highest integer. So our answer is the 68th percentile. Last problem, we want to find the interquartile range or the IQR of this data. The IQR is given by Q3 minus Q1. We found Q3 earlier on in the notes here, and we had gotten a value of 39.5. We haven't found Q1 yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Q1, the first quartile is the 25th percentile, 25 over 100 times the 76 data elements gives us 19. As a reminder, when we get exactly an integer here, we're gonna average that location and the next one. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. We average these two numbers. When they're the same, it's nice and easy. So the first quartile or the 25th percentile is 28. Okay, once we have that, we're just going to plug in uh, Q3 and Q1, subtract them, and we get our IQR of 11.5.